Well, welcome. Welcome everyone as you're beaming in from all over the planet. It's fun to see where folks were joining us from. Um, welcome to discovering your body as the doorway to spiritual path, embodying the mystery with Soma spirit and spirit in service to your higher purpose. Um, my name is Stephanie Mukes and I'm the program director here at the Strozzi Institute. And I'm really excited to be here for this uh, first time ever uh, workshop on Soma and Spirit with Richard Strozzi Heckler. And I wanna share a little bit about Richard um, before we begin. And Richard has spent four decades researching and developing and teaching somatics to business leaders, executive managers, teams of Fortune 500 companies, NGOs, technology startups, nonprofits, the US government and the military. He was also named one of the top 50 coaches uh, in the art and practice of leadership coaching and in profiles and coaching. He's also the co-founder of Mideast Aikido Project, MAP, which brings together Palestinians and Israelis to practice martial, the martial art of Aikido. Um, and he's also the author of eight books. Um, he's got a PhD in psychology and is a Shin Han seventh degree black belt in the martial art of Aikido. And really on a personal note, I wanna bow in to Richard as a teacher and inspiration for my own path um, around somatics and embodiment. And also just say that this particular conversation that we're gonna be stepping into this evening, Richard is just one of my favorites it's really this notion of that the body is a pathway to spirit and um, just excited to be with you this evening. Are you off? Are you with me, Richard? Hi, Stephanie. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm oh, with good. you. Um, yeah. thank, thank you for those good words. And I see a lot of uh, very familiar names and colleagues mm -hmm. and friends and students, and also a number of other people. And really, it looks like people from all around the world. Um, I'm gonna call this the upside of Zoom. Even mm -hmm. though there's a lot of Zoom mania these days, this is the upside of Zoom. And uh, this particular topic of um, the body or the soma as a doorway to spirit is really something that I have really literally been um, in an inquiry with throughout my whole life that began when I was about seven years old with my grandmother, who was really my first teacher and my first spiritual guide, but it has always captivated me. And I've been on two sides of that polarity. One is I come from the tradition of the bodily arts. You know, I wrote and I wrote my PhD dissertation on the relationship between the mind and the body. And the other place is that I've been in a, um, a meditation practice for over a half a century. And I've also been doing um, Aikido, which is also a spiritual path besides being a, an effective uh, self-defense system. So body, body, spirit, spirit. And um, I've had really outstanding teachers who've helped me see how these two are linked together so I'll say that when we speak about the body as a doorway to spirit, if we stay in this study long enough and we go deep into it, we'll then begin to see that body is also spirit, but it's not the body that we're normally accustomed to. So um, let me just pause there for a minute. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Richard, just to start dropping us into the context of this evening. and. We acknowledge that many of you have come to this conversation from a variety of different spiritual traditions or practices, and that also some of you are here really for the first time or really opening a door to what is this connection between body and spirit. And we would just wanna welcome all of you wherever you come from um, into this conversation and also into practice. Um, and I also just wanna share that at the end of this, towards the end of this hour, I'm gonna be sharing with you about an upcoming new retreat that you can attend online with Richard. It's a really unique opportunity to deepen here in this conversation in an embodied way. Um, the ret retreat is called Embodying the Mystery and so stay tuned for that. And I'll hand it back to you, Richard, to really drop us into practice. 
Yes, we're going to do a couple of practices here. Uh, but first, we need to really look at when we say body and spirit, what are we actually talking about? And let me just say that spirit, let's just hold that for now, is that which is beyond our personalities or our characters or our egos or our self-identities, that it is something that actually feeds that, that animates that and bring, brings a certain kind of intelligence to it, a certain kind of mood to it, a certain kind of opening to it. Um, and when we speak about body then, uh, it's really common for us to immediately have an image of the guy on the cover of Men's Health or the woman on the cover of Vogue and with an airbrush body, or I think of my tennis swing, or I think of am I working out in the, the gym or am I losing weight? Or am I not losing enough weight, et cetera, et cetera. And what we'd like to do is really to start to orient the body in what we call the soma. And the soma means that um, the body that we know is the medical body in Western thought um, has boundaries and it's made up of a number of different pieces. The soma is seen as a whole. And the soma really is the place in which we take action, that we generate moods and emotions, that we learn, that we have our own dignity, that we, that we um, are, are connected to others and ways that we internalize our safety. So that in the soma, we have much, much larger boundaries. Let me just go to this point and say these boundaries actually go beyond our own solar system and beyond our, our own galaxies and in, into the universe. So I invite you to let's suspend our customary notions of body that we have um, inherited from the culture and start to really open up that vista. So let, let me um, begin a practice with you that we can say is um, helps, us, helps us really connect to our belonging, to our safety, and to our own dignity. And I'll just shout out, as all of you know, that we're in a very unique historical moment. And with a, not only a global pandemic, we have a global anxiety disorder that's occurring too. And um, there's, we see that our planet is in dire shape with climate crisis and needs to be taken care of. Um, and especially in America, we see this in other countries also, there's huge pressures now on our political institutions and really a very closer look at, let's look at democracy and what does that mean, which is timely. And that there are, in, in America, there are places where law enforcement Department of Just Agencies are killing people of color on the street. So this is all in our mix. And these practices with the body can bring this into a sense of balance, connectedness, well-being, and, and seeing what our contribution could be. So you can do this practice. We'll call it centering, uh, centering on these things, being present, open, and connected, um, instead of just being a, a magnet on your refrigerator or a bumper sticker, something that you can do, you can do all the time. If you wanna sit, you can sit. If you wanna lie down, you can even do that. I'm gonna stand. And um, I, if you're willing and able, I'd like you to join me. And the first thing I want you to do is basically as you're standing or you're sitting, is to bring your attention to the life of your body. What that means is you're moving away from the thinking self into the feeling self. That means you're really engaging the right hemisphere of your brain and you're letting the left hemisphere relax and not be in front. And the first thing I want you to do is feel yourself in the dimension of your length that we can stand upright in this way, in ways that no other animal can do in a sustained way. And when we're standing this way, 
what we want to practice is that our spirit is rising up and we are also settling down. So there's this kind of movement that goes this way, our energy going this way. We're going up into the sky, we're going down into the earth. I want you to feel or imagine that the crown of your head is open. Can you bring your attention right to the crown? That doesn't mean thinking about your crown, it means feeling it, being there. And that vast sky above your head and all that space that's up there, the great, great sea of space. And then we're gonna come down to our feet. And this is what helps you coming down to your feet. Relax your eyes. Come behind your eyes, your peripheral vision will open. Let your jaw relax. Let your shoulders drop. Let your pelvis open. Your knees are soft. And when you're at your feet, extend your toes, spread your toes. And I want you to feel, sense, or imagine the sensation of your feet meeting your rug or your floor. Feel or sense or imagine the floor underneath you if you're in an apartment building, the joists is underneath you and the earth that's holding us all up. And what I'd like you to do in holding this holding that we are connected out into space in the universe. We are connected to the earth, that we belong. As a practice that you do, you might even be in this practice where you're relaxed, but alert. And you could say to yourself, I belong, I belong to the universe. I belong here on the earth. That's a vertical line. If you're looking for a miracle in many ways, this is it. As we go through these, maybe you get to a place and to go, am I doing it right? Or I'm not sure about that. Do I really believe that? That's okay. That's okay. It's just us doing our practices in a continuous way over time that allows us to really to feel we are connected to the earth and we belong to it. And we are connected to the universe and belong to it. Now let's come down to our feet and let's go into our width. We just did length. We're going to go into our width and I want you to feel balance in your feet. Feel familiar and easy with it. You want to jiggle in there you need to move. You can do this on your chair too. Feel balance at your knees. At your hips. Your rib cage. You breathe in your rib cage here. Maybe feel how the ribs go out a little bit, kind of like a clamshell opening a book opening, your shoulders and your head's on straight. Feel the clothes touching your skin. So not only are we feeling balanced in our bodies, our flesh and tissues, we can now extend our energy out and feel those touching us. Again, don't struggle here, don't over effort. Just relax into, that's already touching you. Now extend out into the room that you're in. And maybe in this room, there's some plants, there might be your cat or your dog or your goldfish, what have you, real close by, which reminds you of life or a memory or an adventure you took. Extend into that. So you're connecting 
really outside of the body. You're in your body, you're grounded in your body. You have the capacity to extend out. For example, someone that you love and they're not in this room with you, but they're outside the room and then go to them. Maybe it's an image you saw of them. Maybe their name came up. Maybe there's a sensation in your body. And be with them. What I'd like you to open up to is what we just did here is a reminder to yourself is that you're not alone. Maybe some of you are spending really sequestered time by yourself and no one else, but you're not alone. Life is everywhere. Your plants, that wooden table that came out of a tree, the things outside the room, your friends you may not see as much as you like. And you could say to yourself, I'm not alone. Now let's go into our depth and let's start with our back body because we have so much in front. We're often ahead of ourselves. Come into your back body and feel this long muscles in the backs of your legs. Your low back. And your spine. Don't worry if you really can't feel your spine or those muscles. Just keep resting back down and back into yourself. Back of your head. And I want you to think of this back body is, or is where your history is. And part of your history is your ancestors. If you haven't really looked at that, maybe it just comes to mom and dad. That can be okay. But grandparents, great-grandparents, and then the elders that have been in your life. Your teachers, coaches, your guides. Maybe that one person that you only were in contact with for an hour that really made a significant moment for you. We call in our tribe through our backs, resting back into that. Their energy is with you. And you belong to a stream or a river of humanity and supporters and friends. Come through the back this dark cave where all these organs are, you come out to the front. And I want you to drop your attention to your belly center. So take a hand and just put it, maybe your thumb inside your belly button and then your palm here. And feel what's behind your hand. Let your belly feel your hand. If it arises, you think, oh, I have too much of a belly all that kind of a business. Yeah, just, just relax with that. Come back to the feeling. Instead of all those inherited self-critical criticisms you might have. This is our center of action, center of our body. Other people call it your cough, your hara, tantien, tandem, your waist intuition, will, volition. Now come up your hand and come up to those big pumps, your, your heart, touch your chest. You can do it with one hand, you can do it with two hands. And you're doing that so that maybe you have easier access to feel here. Feel your chest under your hands, feel your hand on the chest, a place of compassion, 
goodwill, warmth, love, care. This is where you care about things. Things matter to you. You hold them with warmth. Come up between the eyebrows, touch the space between your eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah, now you can let your hand go if you want. That doesn't mean thinking now. It means that this is the center of wisdom where you can see in long horizons of time. You can see into large, large spaces and possibilities. That there are things that come to you at a very intuitive level. That you see there's something very particular about you and you're very expansive. You're more than that too. Now, however you think of it, like you might be turning a switch, pressing a button, turning a lever, light up those centers, light up your capacity for skillful action. Light up your capacity for compassion and love, care. Light up this inherent wisdom that you have, this inherent intelligence that you have. And just for a minute, let yourself, even though there might be a voice arguing with you or it's hard to touch those parts of your body, just be for a moment that, no, what, what's inside of the soma? What's inside of your body? There is a capacity to be grounded and act with skillful action, that you have a loving heart and you can be loved and you have a wisdom from your life experiences and that wisdom can grow and can be a great intelligence for you in your life. So a simple practice like that where we understand that I belong, I belong to the heavens, I belong to the earth, that I'm connected to others. I'm connected to the, to the cats and dogs and cows and sheep and all the four-legged and the creepy crawlies and the finned ones, and the winged ones. And my ancestors are at my back, my teachers are at my back. And I can face into the world. I can face into the world by taking direct action, what needs to contribute to the world. Where there's pain and suffering, I can have compassion for that, starting with myself, starting with ourselves, and then for others. And then I can be guided by a wisdom, really an ancient wisdom that's in us at a DNA cellular level. All right, now let's all do this. Either if you're sitting, you can just turn one way or the other. If you're standing, make a full circle to your right. Now I ask you to do that because that's just kind of a changing the space here. Now, I want to show you a practice that we call holding the temple bowl. And this is really to be, uh, increase grounding in our lives, increase grounding. So I want you to take a wider stance so your, your feet are further than shoulder length apart and your toes are pointing out. They're pointing to two o'clock and 10 o'clock. And there's a big brass bowl that you're gonna hold by making your arms come like this and your fingertips touch. You're gonna drop down, your spine is straight. And I want you to relax your shoulders and your arms, holding the temple bowl. And think of this weight as being transferred down through your hips, into your legs, through your feet, onto the floor or rug, and to the earth. And you're letting the earth hold that. Your breath is engaged. 
your tongue is relaxed, your back is straight. Now let's stand. And here I want you to take a moment just to feel. For example, it feels like there's these little fleet of minnows that are going up my legs now. My legs have kind of have come online. I can feel them more. When we do this, we can trust our ground. And we can literally trust the earth, letting ourselves settle into the earth. Again, wide stance, right foot pointing two o'clock, left foot pointing 10 o'clock. It's nothing like it's gonna be perfect, just be comfortable that way. Take the temple bowl, dropping down, drop your shoulders. You can feel the bowls against your chest, inside of your arms. And you're letting that weight go down. You let it go down by relaxing the shoulders. Anytime that before I say stand, if it feels like it's too much, you can stand, but let that sensation <coughs> increase in you. And stand, hands down, and feel. And we're feeling without prejudice or judgment. From the thinking self to the feeling self. And that which is running through our legs, we would say, that's spirit, that's energy, that's life. And life moves towards life. One more time. Wide stance. Toes pointed out. Temple bowl. And just because we can drop down maybe an inch more. Your jaws relaxed. I think, you know, a relaxation is a dynamic state. It's not a collapse. Coming up. Hands to your side. And again, feeling. Maybe you drift away, just come on back. There's nothing we're trying to do perfectly. We're just wanting to be with that energy that animates us. This is really a very powerful, powerful practice to, 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 to use to really ground yourself. And so, much, so many of us are sitting these days in front of our screens every 20 minutes, every 25 minutes, move away from the screen, ground yourself, center yourself. Remember you belong, remember you're not alone. Remember you have a back of people that are supporting you and with you. Let's come back to our seats. Thank you, Richard. 
Um, one of the things I really love about these practices is that um, they are fairly simple and accessible throughout the day. And I'm thinking about folks who are um, in this question of how do I maintain my connection with spirit and source throughout the day, especially in these days that are so stressed? And what would you say about um, how they can foster, foster connection on a more regular basis? Um, <clears throat> what that brings up for me is the, uh, this notion of what we would call longing. And really just because the title of this, the body as a doorway into spirit. For many of you, it meant what, what does he mean by that? Because this notion of spirit or something larger than my own self-identity or my own ego, and what is that thing? We call that, we call that our longing. And what we would say is that that is inherent in every human being. And it's the ignition for us actually seeing the more of ourselves, seeing the bigness of ourselves. And if we touch into that, if we touch into that longing and we'll say, how can I continue to feed this? How can I throw logs on this fire to make that little flame grow bigger that it will bring us to our practices? Because we know, oh, if I, sit in contemplation and meditation, I'll be doing it then. If I stop and do the temple bowl, I'll create it then. And um, in the upcoming uh, retreat that I'll be doing next month, we will be engaged in a number of different um, uh, practices that will we'll say, oh, this fits me because this really tells me about the great potential, that lake of potential that I'm sitting in and that I can begin to nourish. Yeah, I was just gonna say that I really felt that in the temple bowl um, when you said that this aliveness, this sensation is spirit. And I feel like that's the piece that's so exciting to me in this dialogue, in this discourse is that that is not just contained in me, but it's, it's actually the, the the energetic exchange between me and spirit and all that all that is that feels like the, the exciting exciting edge can you say more about that well let, let me say that um when people think of longing or uh, desire for more whatever you are you're moved by something either in your faith or your religion or your spiritual practices is that we, we, we can get lost in the idea of it. Well, what does that mean or how am I in it? And um, from our point of view, what we would say is that longing begins with an impulse. It's a felt experience. It may have a concept. You may see something that you want, but basically it's an impulse that comes out of the soma. Um, longing is not a desire. And what I mean by that is not like something that's um, I can um, buy online or it's a Snickers bar or it's the next cup of tea or my cookie. It's not a desire. It's an impulse to be more deeply connected. What I personally call is source. You have your own names for it. You have multiple names through discourses and traditions and faiths and religions and historical figures connected to it. When I think of source and then think of my teachers I, and, and how they felt, then that increases that impulse in me. So mm. even as I talk about that, I can feel something just, you know, right where my rib cage ends. And it's just a, 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 an increased feeling of warmth. And what we want to do, and I'm going to take you through this quickly, but what you want to do is just to be with that. You don't have to contain it. You don't have to study it. You don't have to whip it up so it's more, more excitation. Simply just being with that and naming it. Oh, there's this impulse 
uh, starting to move into an urge. Hmm. For me, the urge is like I'm I'm kind of being moved forward or I'm sitting up straighter. Move forward, sitting up straighter. If we move even more into that, we could say, then what it happens is it, as it gets bigger, it unfolds into a yearning. And I have this, this generalized feeling that there's something that I'm yearning for. And inside of that yearning, I begin to open up. So I did this with my hands. It's almost like this impulse is moving like this. And then all of a sudden we feel like an unfolding, like mm -hmm. maybe that from the, your magnolia tree, that's just that bud and it just starts to unfold. And then from there, it goes into a longing. And, you know, um, like I said, so many traditions talk about this. Um, even the, the Buddha say, not, not desire, um, but basically we begin because we do, we do have a longing. We're, we're wanting to move to something. Not, and it could be because I see a possibility, could be because I'm tired of impersonating myself, tired of these ego machinations that I do. What else is there? Or we see somebody that embodies that. The, the uh, Sufis, the Persian Sufis, uh, in Farsi, they have a word called Farik or Duri. And I love that. This is my language when I, Farsi was one of my languages when I got my PhD. And what it means is homesickness. Mm -hmm. So longing is that we're moving back mm -hmm. towards that original being that we are. We're moving back towards that oneness mm -hmm. or that source in which we are most authentic, most genuine, we're most generous there, most kind. Beginning with too, I believe very much that, you know, we, we my experience has shown me we have to be generous with ourself, spacious with ourselves first before we can really be generous with others. We need to be kind to ourselves first before we can be really kind and compassionate to others. But it's moving towards like one that you're away from home for so long um, and maybe on the planet itself, you've had that experience and you long to get back to your partner or your kids or your buddy or your spouse in one way or the other. Mm. Yeah, that was the home sickness, Farik. Farik. Mm -hmm. Farik. Mm -hmm. So I want to show you something. I want to show you a movement. And often it's very powerful to do this movement when you're lying down. And in our, our body work system, Strozzi somatic, somatic body work, what we do is that we, we um, have people lie down when we do body work. But in one of the movements, there's this movement where you hold your arms up like this. You're spreading your chest, your palms are out, and you're raising your head this way. Like you're looking up to the sky, looking up into those planets and those stars. And before we do that together, one of the places I learned with this is that of the children that I've raised and all the statues that I've seen in different traditions where you'll see this. So my kids would be at some, they're about my knee level, they're standing knee level. And at some point I can feel them tugging on my leg and they would do this and they would say mm -hmm. uppy. And it's really that initial urge to go, I want to, I want to come up to your level. I have an urge to come to meet you here. I long to be closer to you. So um, let's try that for a moment. And it's our longing. And before we do that, let's just take a moment to relax into what is it that you long for? Just see what comes up. Mostly these fall in really, really big buckets. My health. Deeper contact, intimate contact with others. I long for full expression. I want to go home. 
when they connected to, to source. The other thing is that in reaching out with our hands, we can also reach out with our mouth like this. Reaching out with your mouth, because as you remember with children, they get something in their hand, it goes into their mouth. It's a primary editor. And it's also a reflex in us that turns us towards the breast for nourishment. So what you long for, put virtue in yourself, put in the world, reach up, turn your head back. Palms are extended, fingers are extended. Release that, come back. Arms to your side. And again, be just with the energy or the field that's moving through you now. So, Stephanie, that was a big way. Your question was, mm. how do you sustain these practices? <laughs> Get in touch with your longing. Yeah. Through those practices, you. we can transform that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel really touched that that longing is, or this is how it's landing in me, that longing is almost the voice of spirit through, through me, the unique, the unique conversation that I'm having with life mm. here. And um, <clears throat> as I did that last practice, I could feel um, just more space for longing mm. by actually taking a shape in my body. It was like, oh, I could give that, that conversation and that connection more space. So thank you. Glad to hear I, that. Yeah. And I know that part of what folks who were interested in coming to this this um, workshop this evening or today, whatever time time zone you're in, really this notion of what are the practices? And I feel like those are three very powerful pieces and they're very accessible, that they don't take ex extraordinary amounts of time to actually have a, a shift or um, some more information become available. Um, so thank you, really appreciate that. Um, and I want to I want to take care of time here, and also um, make sure that we can let folks know that really this is a what we did this evening is really a taste of what we're going to be moving into in the four day retreat with you. Um, again, embodying the mystery four day retreat online, and really want to take some time here, um, Richard, to have have you tell us a little bit about what is what kind of what's the arc of those four days and some of the things that we'll be exploring as we deepen into this embodied conversation. The intent and my wish for these four days, even though we're meeting in the morning, 9.30 to 12.30, is that um, you consider those, those, that those two weekend days as a retreat for yourself. Now that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but it can be a moment that you're really going to the oasis and you're drinking, drinking deeply to those things that have meaning for you and practice for you. And that we, we see in the retreats too, really that one of our really powerful teachers is silence and that everything that we're doing online and with our, with our, uh, different machines is just to can we just stop stop and feel and really listen to ourselves so you know what we'll be c covering inside of this arc is that we're going to have look at the stories that we embody about what we think about spirit body emotions and i'll give you examples of those we'll consider those and Eventually, those kind of conversations, we want to move into actually writing your own spiritual autobiography. What is it, what is it that's happened to you? And who affected you? And how did they affect you? 
And the power of doing something like that is that we be, it, it, it asks us to go back and to honor, to honor our past and to look at that, oh, that person did mean this to me. And even though this was rocky with this person, this is what I got out of it. This is mm -hmm. called embodying the mystery retreat.com that we're going to do. Um, we're going to look at the places in which, um, how do we identify spirit? How do I identify it? And I'll give you examples of certain moments that happened to me in my life that were, I think are called paranormal experiences. And I'm sure that many of you had where I was shunted out of my body and um, at a time when I hadn't re read much or any literature about that. And, um, but that uh, it really opened up these doors for me and really fed this longing, what is these things? And um, as those things happened later in my life, one of the main people that I contacted was my grandmother, who was mm. very instrumental in, in opening me to um, uh, the world of spirit. So the notion of, of looking at those things. Also, in every, every time we're together, we will deepen into the practices we've been doing and we'll add new practices. So those will be practices both contemplative where we're sitting still that we might call meditation or mindfulness and going through a fundamental ground of that and then moving into, into other domains or, or curvatures or angles, look at that and to deepen into that. And um, I will also be coaching people. If people have questions or they're looking for some coaching about what's next for them, we will take time to do that also. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll look at here is that in the moment to really move forward into this deeper in this area of spirit, what do you have to unpack? What do you have to let go of? What is no longer of use to you in terms of your age, your experience, where you are at this particular intersection of your life? What do you need to let go of? And the, 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 the sibling to that, the brother or sister to that, is then what are you going to let go into? Mm -hmm. You let go of something and you let go into something. And it's not so much that I have to come up with this answer because more and more I go, I think um, really the conversations we want to have is to deepen the questions. Mm. Not necessarily I'm going to get an answer to something. I'm going to deepen these questions. So I don't know what I'm going to surrender into, but what a, what a thought. What do the other people say? What does Richard have to say about it? There's a place that I can learn about that. What is the shape that I can take that is a surrendering shape? The mm. shape that I take that is a surrendering shape that allows that intelligence or that a wisdom to arise out, out of the body. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do as a whole is to really... Um, take our time, take the long view to get our planet back on course for health. It's going to take a while to really, to really erase racism. That's going to take a while for us to move into these different stages of awakening. That will take a while and we can relax into that. As the poet says, you only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Mm -hmm. You don't have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting, Mary Oliver says. Mm. Yes, yeah. so we Thank have a long horizon of time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and I'm so glad that you spoke to the why, sort of the forsake of what, why do we want to be having this conversation about body and spirit in this time. And I just appreciate you connecting that up with um, just the big questions that collective, individually and collectively we are inside of that 
feel like it's really asking us to, to ask more powerful questions and listen more deeply. So thank you. And um, I want to take this time to actually let folks know a little bit more about this retreat. And Richard um, already mentioned the website um, or the landing page for this, this retreat, embodying the mystery retreat.com. Um, so if you're inclined, you're welcome to, to click on that or go there and, and track along with me here. I'm just going to step through some of the pieces um, that will be landing in over this um, these four days. And Richard kind of gave you a, a painting of um, the feel or, and or the energetic field that we'll be in. And just to kind of land us in some of those um, takeaways or really the forsake of what we're coming together. And part of that is to um, embody the mystery or your connection with spirit more purposefully um, and to really have a felt sense of the interdependence that we are, that these bodies really are connecting us with all of life. Um, <clears throat> also to feel the whole self embodied open to a pathway to more aliveness. And then that more aliveness actually gives rise to deeper connection to our purpose. Um, and then also, as we talked about, these practices really give us the opportunity to stay closer to source throughout the day. Most of us are uh, moving in many directions right now, even though it's contained inside of our homes <laughs> in many ways. Um, and we may have a, a practice that we do in the morning or the evening, but really what is it like and how do we stay in connection with source and spirit throughout the day? Um, so we'll be engaging in that conversation and in practices that support us there. Um, and then we'll be identifying the three principles you want to live by and exploring your spir spiritual lineage. And so Richard spoke to that a little bit in this um, uh, spiritual autobiography. So really taking time to reflect on the lineages that you already come from and that are supporting you to get to this moment and what might be actually guiding your way as you move forward. So really taking some time to linger there and um, connect with lineage. Um, and then we'll also be um, connecting with how we, we contact our intuition. That, that's really a body thing. <laughs> And as Richard pointed to, he's going to share lots of his great stories. He's full of great stories. So it's that's why I'm one of the reasons I'm so excited about this retreat is just to have time to really get more of those. Um, and then also have the opportunity to investigate and expand that for my own life and for your own life if you choose to join us. Um, and then we just want to also say that we'll be practicing at an intentional practices for shifting states of consciousness. Um, Richard was thinking about doing that tonight, but there's a practice that um, that I find very powerful, again, simple and powerful, but really exploring that capacity to shift states of consciousness on purpose and working with and through the body. Um, and then orient to acting from wisdom into skillful action. And again, circling back to this piece about why this conversation and why now, um, at least it lives in my heart and I know in many of your hearts that this is a big moment in time and it's asking a lot of us. And this connection to spirit is, um, is where we wanna be making more of our decisions from. So um, that's also gonna be part of our embodied conversation and practice together as a community. Um, so I wanna stop there and then also just let you know that this evening for um, joining us either in real time or watching the video, you'll have um, the opportunity to get $100 off of this retreat. It's normally $397 and you'll be able to get it for $297. And then also we're going to be offering to support you to join us and say yes, um, the option of paying in two separate payments, which we don't normally do in our online events. So just want to encourage you to join us in this depthful conversation um, and really have time to deepen with, with Richard and then also as community. Um, and I wanna just toss it back to you, Richard, and see if there's anything else you wanna say about this time or this conversation as we close for this evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Let, let me say that um, I, I, wa I, I want to acknowledge I've had really exemplary teachers in my life. and. Um, 
Uh, most of them have passed on, but really the work that I've been inquiring in has been so deeply influenced by them that I, I bow into them right, right, right now. And if every time I might have had a um, quarrel with God or this doesn't work or I get cynical or I get resigned or what else, they, in their own words, always gave the same answer. They either said, get back on your cushion, keep sitting, or get back on the mat. In other words, um, mm -hmm. uh, practices. Mm -hmm. And really, really had me see that in order to grow, change, get in touch with our inherent wisdom and compassion is that um, it requires that we sit down and practice. And we learn mm -hmm. how to do that in a very relaxed way, mm. very mm -hmm. relaxed way, because what we're looking for is already here. And they, every one of them said to me, um, it's inside you is what you're looking for. So um, that's why I say I'm into practices because they worked or seem to be working. Maybe the last five minutes of my life and I go, whoops, wasn't that. But for now, that's where I'm putting my money. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Richard. We'll put, we hope to put our money there too. Um, and then just the last thing I'll say, just to remind folks that the website for this offering is embodyingthemystery.com and the retreat will take place over March 13th and 14th and then the next, the following weekend. Um, and it will be uh, both synchronous, so live, three hours of live teaching and then the second half of the day, you'll be invited into asynchronous learning, really doing practices on your own and reflection. Um, and as Richard said at the top, we're really inviting folks to hold this, these two uh, weekends, consecutive weekends as a whole retreat and really give yourself the opportunity to drop in, to practice, to reflection um, at, with the support of community. So we look forward to seeing you and um, until we meet again. And I know Richard likes it. I don't know if we have the technical capacity to do this, um, but if you wanna take yourself off of mute and say goodbye, you're welcome to do that. And we, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so Adios. much, Richard. Bye. 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 Bye.